At one point or another, we've all made at least one unlikely friendship, and that's what the story of Surya and Roscoe is all about. Joining us this morning to talk about this book is Doc Bhagavan Antel, the founder and director of Tigers, the Institute of Greatly Endangered and Rare Species. Good morning. Before we talk about Surya and Roscoe, the book, I want to hear a little bit more about Tigers. Well, Tigers is a company that has a beautiful preserve um, in Myrtle Beach called Myrtle Beach Safari, where we keep about 100 animals living with us there, from the elephants to the large orangutan family to 67 tigers that stay there with us, the world's greatest collection of interactive wildlife, which a lot of people have no idea is hidden in Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. I'm from Myrtle Beach, and I had no idea it was there either. I'm so excited about this book, too, because you kind of catch a glimpse of what is going on in there, some beautiful pictures and a really neat story. Tell us a little bit about Surya and Roscoe. Now, Surya and Roscoe met um, because Surya and I were out taking a ride on our elephant. We ride the elephant through the woods, and Surya plays around in the trees, and the elephant goes down to the river and takes a swim. And when we were riding through the woods, a little hound dog came up, barking and yapping around the elephant, which is very unusual in itself. They usually shy away from us. But this hound dog wanted to talk to that orangutan, and the orangutan was watching that hound dog with great intent. And when we stopped, the orangutan jumped off the elephant, ran over, and put the hound dog in his arms and hugged him and didn't want to let go of him. The two of them played around for an hour, splashing and goofing around on the shore, having an incredible time. We then tried to find a home for the hound dog. We, we called the number on his tag. We knocked on neighbors' doors and said, does anyone know where this dog's come from? We couldn't find his home. He ran off on his own again, but he showed back up by squeezing through the gates of the preserve and again finding the orangutan. The orangutan started feeding him his own food, giving him his own water, and the two of them started finding their own bond. Uh, just expanded from there that they just had this extraordinary friendship. The orangutan had adopted him. We didn't really need a new dog, but the orangutan obviously had another plan. And we started letting them spend the nights together and play around. And I started photographing their life as they wandered about the preserve. And uh, they became these extra extraordinary photographs that are inside of this book. Wow, what it an amazing story. It has a real message, story. too. And yeah, it's really neat how they've, how they've come along. Can you explain and this kind a cool of attraction? And it's a cool message in there. I'm sorry, say again? Can you explain this kind of attraction between the orangutan and the dog? You know, it, it's really unexplainable because it's not common that they would just become such great friends like they are. Uh, orangutans are kind of aloof, and dogs, a lot of the time, are not uh, too akin to monkeys. Monkeys are kind of chattering, biting, r fierce characters that dogs don't necessarily get along with. But these two, from the moment they made eye contact, they seem to have a special bond. Mm -hmm. And I think that they express this idea so well of anyone can become friends with anyone else. Everyone can get along, and they're the great expression of that. I think that that story has been able to carry um, to the hearts and minds of millions of people, which is why it's lasted so long. It's been two years now, and the story is still broadcast on television on all kinds of shows and has been on National Geographic many times. I think that the story is just powerful that way. Mm -hmm. That's why we really made it a book, because we thought that the book would have the uh, ability to let kids think about they can be friends with anyone and how well we could all get along and that they they really help you know tell us that story as well the book is just filled with that kind of imagery and it's a tale of just great friendship. It is a wonderful story. I mean, I had a smile on my face the entire time I read the book. And certainly great for kids. And like you said, a really good message. The photos in the book are certainly very special, too. Um, tell viewers how, what they can find in the book. Tell us a little bit about the photos. You know, it's, it's that great play that these two have. The preserve is a beautiful, extraordinary place that's filled with lush vegetation, big open lawns, and they love to go out there and romp around and play. Surya will take Roscoe for walks on a leash, or we'll just let him loose. They love to go down to the same river where they met and swim and play down there. Um, you know, in the beginning, the dog was a much better swimmer than the orangutan, and slowly the orangutans learned to swim more and more. They actually have another book we 
hope that'll come out that talks about how well the orangutan learned to swim because of his great dog Fred. But just the two of them having such a loving time and wanting to share food and go for walks just makes the heart melt. They have mm -hmm. such a great relationship. It really does. And you've actually trained animals for several movies. Dr. Doolittle, Ace Ventura, Forrest Gump. What's your approach to training? You know, I've trained a lot of different animals over the last 30 years for all kind of movie and television um, jobs, and it's been an extraordinary experience that allowed us to kind of get a better insight into what animals' needs and wants really were, um, and to spend that kind of time with them, which isn't really available in most zoological environments. We got to know them on a one on one basis and see what their needs were, and from that, Develop things like the uh, the orangutan going out for rides on the elephant, and our big project to have the tigers um, learn to swim and play, and we have them chase a big lure machine where they run at high speed, and all of those are some of the experiences the guests see when they come to the Myrtle Beach Safari Park as well. Well, in these troubled times, this book is certainly a great reminder of the camaraderie that can exist despite the great differences. Doc Antle, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back.